Hello and welcome. My name is Ela Sethi and I am a nuclear medicine physician at Emory University. Thank you for joining me for this presentation today. This presentation is part of a patient-centered video series of lectures on prostate cancer diagnosis and treatment, which is organized by the Society of Nuclear Medicine and Molecular Imaging. The focus of my talk today is radium-223, which is a radionuclei therapy approved for advanced state prostate cancer with metastatic bone disease. And I'm going to talk about various aspects of uh, this treatment. So what does it mean to have metastatic bone disease as a result of prostate cancer? It essentially means that the cancer has spread to the bones now. And the incidence of uh, bone metastases is significant. It is seen in up to 85% of patients with prostate cancer. And the way it presents is either with pain or fractures that can happen with minimal trauma. Sometimes there can be an uh, increase in blood calcium levels. If the bones involved are actually the vertebral column, there can be compression of the spinal cord and the symptoms would depend upon what part of spinal cord is getting compressed. What are the treatment options available? So uh, the treatment options that are available, they include analgesics for uh, pain control, chemotherapy, hormone therapy, radiation therapy, uh, steroids, surgery, and radionuclide therapy, including radium-223. Let's talk about who is a candidate for radium-223 therapy. A patient who has painful metastatic disease and the pain is now inadequately controlled by pain medications, or the patient has become intolerant to pain medications. The disease has become resistant to hormone therapy, and there is no evidence of visceral disease. How does this work? So radium-223 is essentially an analog of calcium, which means that it accumulates in the bone at the site of increased bone activity. And wherever there is metastatic uh, disease in the bone, that uh, area would have increased bone activity. And once it gets deposited to that uh, area of metastases, it emits alpha radiation, which is a kind of particulate radiation, and then it would kill tumor cells locally. So you may want to ask, what preparation does one need for this therapy? So there are a few things to consider. Fasting is not needed. And then if you're prone to nausea, you may ask for an anti-nausea script from your oncologist. And then other medications uh, like for diabetes, uh, hyperlipidemia, high blood pressure, you can take those med medications as usual. However, it is recommended that if you're taking supplements, including calcium and vitamin D, it is recommended that you may want to pause those four days before and after the therapy. If incontinence is an issue, your oncologist may want to consider uh, catheterization uh, or one may want to use uh, absorbent pads uh, as needed. So how is the treatment uh, given? This can be done as an outpatient. You don't need to stay in the hospital. This is a set of six uh, IV injections given slowly over a period of one minute and these are given at four week intervals. So once the injection is given, that's when the radiation safety precautions uh, kick in. And you have to observe the radiation safety precautions for uh, seven days after each treatment. And your oncologist, your nuclear medicine team, they would talk in great detail about these radiation safety precautions. But few key aspects of these uh, precautions, I just, I just want to emphasize on that. So the basic principle that you need to understand is once the, the, the drug, the treatment, it goes in, you become the source of uh, radiation. And the goal of these precautions, uh, uh, there are two goals. One is to protect others from uh, any radiation. And second, to protect uh, your own body from any harmful effects of the radiation. So 
once it goes inside the body, it is excreted in all bodily fluids, including urine, sweat, saliva, all bodily secretions. So the goal is to not have any uh, any person come in contact with um, those uh, secretions. And the way to do is have a separate bathroom for yourself, drink plenty of water, use bathroom frequently, flush twice after every use, etc. And then there is specific recommendation uh, related to sexual activity uh, uh, while getting this treatment. Uh, it is recommended uh, that uh, condoms be used uh, for intercourse and the female partners should also uh, use contraception um, because this drug can cause uh, fetal harm. What are the other side effects? So the most commonly seen side effects are diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, decrease in platelets, which are the clot forming cells. And what that can do is lead to increase uh, uh, bleeding tendencies or increasing bruisability. And these side effects are seen in approximately 10% of the patients. Other uncommon side effects include decrease in white blood counts and um, which may lead to increased susceptibility to infections. So there are a few more considerations related to radium-223. One is, what if there is a delay in the subsequent treatment? As I, as I mentioned, that there, these treatments are four weeks apart. So the uh, scientific literature, it shows that if there is a delay for up to four weeks, that does not alter the efficacy of the treatment. However, if the delay is beyond four weeks, that hasn't been studied and that can totally be the discretion of your uh, oncologist to proceed with the treatment. Then the other question that comes to mind is how long uh, does this treatment work? So the literature that we have, it's uh, according to that literature, it gives a survival benefit of 14.9 uh, months and uh, a 30% decrease in the risk of death. So some, something to consider. Uh, another consideration is, can you have it more than once? So the answer to that, we don't know yet because there is no scientific literature uh, widely researched and accepted that talks about the efficacy and safety of a second six injection regimen. So again, this can totally be the uh, uro-oncologist's uh, discretion. So the take home message, uh, one thing that I want you to remember from this talk, this is a valid uh, alternative which has the potential to improve quality of life and talk to your oncologist and see if you're a candidate for this therapy. If you have any questions, this is my email address sila2 at emory.edu. Feel free to write to me for any questions. And last but not the least, this is uh, I want to acknowledge our prostate cancer outreach working group who have been working very hard to put this uh, series together. Uh, once again, thank you for joining me. Thank you for your time.